The Future of Sex, Part 2. Gender Manipulation. Orgasm science and the question of where we as a species will go when we can finally have whatever we want, sexually or genetically speaking. These are a few of the topics that we will dive into on tonight's conclusion of our discussion on the future of sex. for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> How bizarre. I need, a, I need a good intro. You do. Um, I do. Like, greetings from the space pod was so perfect. <laughs> and, 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 and I mean, it's not special, but it, it was just easy to say. But welcome back to How Bizarre is the only thing I can come up with. I guess that's going to How about howdy do? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. It's well, that's the one to beat. <laughs> that's the Howdy. one to beat. Howdy do. <laughs> yeah, let's try to lose all the listeners in the first 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, it could be worse. But anyway, welcome back to Hell Bazaar. We're going to be finishing up our discussion on the future of sex. We covered most of it last week, but there are a few topics that I wanted to throw out. And I'm curious what you guys think. I Because I tried to look up some science with specific agenda in mind uh well not really agenda but like i was looking for some specific answers and i found it interesting that i couldn't really find them and that in and of itself is a bit of an answer but before we get on to the uh, conclusion of the future of sex what's uh let's get the newsroom board going here what you guys got uh, to share with us this week i got a bizarre story about a, a lake up in the himalayas Ooh. Oh, it's a uh, lake? it's uh, lovingly called skeleton lake oh Ooh, yeah boner alert Right. Well, this this lake, I guess, for um, the course of like a thousand years, is uh, have all these uh, skeleton remains, and uh, they like archaeologists think that it was uh, some type of a catastrophic kind of ancient thing. Is to oh, blame. Oh yeah, but, I think I remember yeah. seeing the pictures of this. Well, they've it's studied. Haunting. Yeah, they've studied and analyzed over uh, thirty-eight skeletons that re- that uh, kind of revealed that the people were all. All, all over the place <laughs> over the course of a uh, thousand oh wait uh, it was human skeletons i don't remember that the one i'm imagining was like a bunch of fossilized i'm kind of mad mummified like, like critters no 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 these are people and i, I kind of um i think of <laughs> was it like a pompeii thing like a natural disaster that no it's it's more of just a lake up, up, up in the himalayas up in the mountains like, it's kind of like yeah, what's the what's the theory that wiped this? them all out well, exactly. That's uh, the mystery to the. the so, okay, so they don't, don't really have a working theory on. Okay, interesting. Out of out of um, the uh, the thirty eight skeletons that they kind of went and did DNA checks and uh, trying to figure out who they were and ethnic wise where they came from. Uh, out of uh, twenty three of them, um, they said they they came around pretty much the present day India, which would make sense. Uh, but like fourteen of them came from like Crete and Greece, and that's hmm. a that's a mind fuck because it's like what the fuck were the the Greece doing there, <laughs> you know, in eighteen Greece, you know, before Christ, you know, it's 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 such a weird thing. Himalayas, and to me, huh. it, I thought maybe like how cool would it be if it was like a Game of Thrones where like you know everybody got together to go battle the. <laughs> the <laughs> yes. Yeah, they all yeah. lost some uh, guys, colossal battle. Died. Oh, wow. Well, what if this is the uh, fabled fountain of youth or fountain of eternity? If you will. I guess would make more sense here because they probably well, ain't looking too young, but they're uh, immortalized, right? Yeah, it's not a fountain. It's it's more of a lake. The lake of youth <laughs> really doesn't have the same ring to it. No, but I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe uh, some aliens were flying by and they accidentally dropped a giant toaster, although it would need to be plugged in for that to to matter yeah or am i wrong on that 
Well, and you know, well, the, let's not, call him. I mean, let's get to brass tacks oh, with this scientific theory about time. <laughs> well, the only the other thing I was kind of thinking of was what if it was uh, just like a sacred place to, to end it? You know, uh, oh. in China, there's certain forests. That oh, like a suicide go. lake. Yeah, well, you know, mm. people, there's people that go in those those forests. I mean, strictly to kill themselves, and they they pull tents and bodies and out of that those forests. Yeah, don't uh, they call it the suicide forest? Or something well, like there's a name that it's kind of like a translated out like death forest or something like that. Yeah, but everybody knows, you know, not to go in there because they're, they're just just weird shit. A lot of suits. Except Logan Paul, let's take that camera in there, baby. And Lon- yeah, that's that's what made it really popular. I think <laughs> he was a YouTuber that yeah. went there and videotaped it and then put it on YouTube and, and found was- and found people like hanging oh. right. Yeah. yeah, and that was a fucking huge no no, dude. Yeah, he got so much flack for that because it's kind of a sacred sure. place. You, you wouldn't go into, like, a mausoleum, you know, and record some shit that some other country believes in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It is Whatever. a little different, but I, I yeah. <laughs> I mean, putting that on YouTube was pretty well, shitty. I mean, unblurred. Yeah, he knew, though, is the thing. It wasn't like it was an accident. He tried to play like, oh, I don't know. I just went through the woods. <laughs> well, I don't know what these things hanging around are. Yeah. Strange fruit. What was that great, uh, oh, haunting, haunting song that... Uh, Billy Holiday saying, I don't know if it, I think someone else wrote it, but it's, I think it's called Strange Fruit. It's, oh, about, yeah. it's about hanging trees, strange fruit hanging from the tree. Oh my God. Ugh, dark, title. dark yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. Um, is that a dog in the background or someone watching Speedy Gonzalez? <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> Gemma? It was dog. It was dog. It was dog. He's dead now. Fucking neighbor dogs. Fucking <laughs> insane and. Fucking annoying as shit. <laughs> he dead now. He Speaking of dead dogs, man. I had to bury Jed this uh, this past week. Oh shit, man! I'm really sorry. Oh, no boy. Idea. Yeah, you know it was sad, but it's like God, the last year living with that dog was pretty trying. If I'm being honest, yeah. he was like it was like taking care of your great grandpa. Um, you know, you want to be good at it, but ultimately, I think most of us would be pretty bad at it and ready for the end when it inevitably came and it was pretty sad that last he was fucking i i used to joke that that dog would bury me because he was so strong he was like 15 you know a big old black lab uh sweet boy but dumb as a bag of fucking hammers but we had lots of <laughs> lots and lots of wacky adventures together but it was uh it was pretty sad to bury him and it's weird that first pile of dirt that goes over the top of him it's just like Okay, you start with the like the midsection and then the tail, and then it's like I gotta pour dirt on his face. I think a lot of people put them in bags or something so they don't have to yeah. see that sensation. But I was like, that's silly. Just, sleeping bags or some some on the lines of like sleeping bags. So we used to bury our bags and then bury them in the backyard. I get that part of the uh, <laughs> yeah the process at this point because it is it is kind of pathetic, but. Yeah, circle of life, but it's weird because I look outside from, you know, you guys have all been here, of course. When you look out the highway across my house, when I first moved in, that was all orchard. It quickly got cut down, but it had remained, it was just a barren field for like the last 15 years. Well, about two years ago, they started developing it, and now there are these big apartment buildings being built right across. Can you even imagine that? <laughs> like looking out from, uh, you know, that beautiful apartment, mountain Right view, across from your house? Right yeah. across the from Grant Road, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, right across Grant Road, I should say. But, uh, but it was really poignant to just, like, bury that dog that I used to walk out there all the time. There were, you know, it was a perfect hour if you walked out through that field and you went meandering down and he came back through the orchard and he's out he'd always find a couple of frozen pears on the ground and on in the winter and <laughs> it was just like uh wow times they change and it's i've been so fucking busy i'm barely home and when i am home i'm either working on something or sleeping so it was strange to see just like look up all of a sudden that's a lot of noise happening somewhere i thought it was your mic at first no oh. John Mark? John Mark, you... <laughs> Everybody pause. Everybody mute. I'm, I'm muted, dude. I'm not moving. That's not me. I think I'm not moving. I hear it, too. Wow, that's it. Yeah, I'm muted. Is that interference? It kind of sounds like someone talking. Is that Jed from the grave? <laughs> don't talk about me, boy. I just muted and heard it, too, so I don't know what's going on here. That's weird. That's weird. I don't like it. Oh, Check now we got an echo. Uh, uh, piggybacked on by a ghost? 
I th- I feel like it's some sort of transmission interference. Uh, let's, let's hang on. Let's be quiet for about 30 or 20 seconds to see what happens. <laughs> hmm. Okay, now let's start talking again and <laughs> see if it comes back. <laughs> wow. Anyway, anyway, to wrap up, mm. poignant. <laughs> And if that was you from the land beyond, just, no, see, there it is again. Lyle, have you uh, mute, have muted yet? Yeah. No, I'm muted. Uh-huh. Are you muted Are you now? muted now? I am not now, because <laughs> I'm talking to you. Test? Test? Where the fuck Where did the, the echo come, the come echo from come. all of a sudden? Check, check. Oh, no. One, two. One, two. Hmm. Mm. That is a that serious is echo. Test? Test? That still fixes it. <laughs> wow, that is going way back. Speaking of, yeah. this is weird because <laughs> yeah. it was about that time when I was out hiking around with Jed across the street that we were having the echo issues like that, huh? Okay, well, why don't we why don't we end this call and we'll we'll start it again? How do? Well, everything seems fine. <laughs> yeah, sounds better. <laughs> so we just uh, give it a shot and see where so it goes. Good. Haven't had to deal with this in a while. Well, uh, I think Lyle might have been done with his story. So why don't we get on to uh, one of y'all's? Oh hey, yeah. Did you guys did you guys look in the the the, at the link that I sent to the space pod uh, bullshitting? Or Jesus, it's the how bizarre bullshitting now, isn't it? Mm, I haven't um, seen that. Um, you should all take a take a minute and go to how <laughs> bizarre bullshitting, <laughs> and um, uh, just take a look at that uh, little link that I sent there. Okay. Describe what you're seeing. What am I looking at here? It's, it's called. called Toilet Shooting Star, and it's a toilet racing game from Japan. I'm listening. <laughs> so, so it's, it's literally it's, like Mario Kart, but it's on toilets. And it's available on Steam as we speak. Um, I don't know if it's available on English Steam or Japanese Steam or if they're all connected or what. But uh, Steamer. Yeah, yeah, it's not opening for me. So, But anyway, describe uh, for the audience what we're seeing here. I guess you just did. Chris, is it literally Chris, uh, describe what you're Mario Kart in, with in poop? A it's, a, it's a racing game where you're sitting on a toy toy, uh, cruising around, throwing toilet paper rolls at people, like turtle <laughs> shells. It does sound fun. <laughs> yeah, a game the whole family can play. Get behind that. That sounds toilet like a game we should have star. came up with. Uh-huh. Speaking of poop, uh, Christopher, is it safe to talk about your <laughs> experience last night, or is I, that I think so, against yeah, work I, policy? I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think it'd be fine. Uh, I work for a resort and casino, and uh, I was a manager on duty last night. So, like, this thing I have to do once a month because I'm a manager where I go in for an evening, and if anything, if the shit hits the proverbial fan, they call me to uh, make sure I have a report generated for management and stuff and uh, to help out where I can. A lot of times it's like a customer gets upset about something, and I have to go down and just, oh, I'm really sorry that that you have that bad experience. You know, here's a fucking free play card for $20 or whatever. Yeah. You know, but sometimes it's bigger. Like last night, I I was uh, 10 minutes away from going home, and I got a call that something had happened. So the story is that I still don't know the whole story because I haven't been back to work since, but one of the guests in in one of the rooms broke their toilet (laughs) and sewage shot up all over them, all over their body. And they were so fucking shit faced hammered that instead of, you know, calling for help like a normal person, they just crawled back into bed covered in (laughs) shit in the morn. Yeah, uh, this is a problem for future me. Um, and then, <laughs> they, then they just let the toilet continue to overrun, like spewing out water. It leaked four floors to a restaurant. Oh, God. To a uh, restaurant. Yeah. No, you so, sure you're okay with this going out on the show? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. They, they fixed names, it. But... They've cordoned off the area of week two, and they've sure. totally taken care of everything. So. Okay. It's no, there's no problem there, but uh, it's, it was just nuts. I, I I went up to the room. That's a lot of shit to, if it's going through that many photos. floors, man. Well, I don't know that the shit actually – it was shit at that point. It was, it was just probably the water. just toilet water, but it was initially a backup that flooded the entire hotel room they were in. It was just crazy. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, I had pictures to send to Ron because I had to go up there. And, like I, they had By the time I got to the room to take some photos for my report – they had taken like most of the stuff out of it except for the bed and i took my first step into the room and it was like squish <laughs> squish oh, no. squish Ugh. 
There's poop on a wall. I don't know what the fuck happened in there. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? Is it, it, here's the thing, though. When people are in hotels, they're semi-civilized animals <laughs> in some situations. Yeah. like, not my fucking problem. Someone mm-hmm. else is going to have to deal with this. Uh, I'm out of here tomorrow night. Let's just get. So did did they ever call or did you just discover it? And, no, and no. What? I got a call from uh, somebody that was panicked from the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was where was it? Crazy. Where was it coming down in the restaurant? Came down into a storage area where they kept a lot of the food. <laughs> okay. So they had there's no, there's no good out. answer, but uh, no, there really, there really isn't. I would call that a middle of the road answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I had, how did they break the toilet? Like what? I have what kind no of break? Idea. You saw the you saw the photo I sent you though, right? Yeah, the but it was like right <laughs> now. I have no. Like fucking they broke idea. it. Broke it. It was like yeah, the porcelain was cracked. I think if somebody sits on it wrong these days, um, you know, if you weigh too much, possibly you could crack it. I don't know. Or if you're drunk, maybe you just like sit down on it real hard and just fell, I like, fell yeah. onto it. I, I I've know. I've done that. I mean, I've done that with like house toilets, but usually, you know, in a hotel, that shit's got to be built for <laughs> champion. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have one more story I want to sh- uh, talk about real fast here. A little world story. Okay. Uh, apparently, Mexico is legalizing recreational coke. Did you hear about this? No, I heard this about is it, a- but is it is it that cut and dry? I don't know. I don't think I it's an across it. the board thing. I think this was a specific to one case. But go ahead and tell me what you got. That's all I got. I just I, mm. I saw the headlines several times and I thought it was. I think I that's the were- thing. Now I could be wrong. Um, I'm not oh, set up in a good spot to look something up, but I, I think how this panned out was that was the headline, but what it was, was there's a couple of criminals that were incarcerated and for some reason they were granted <laughs> the use of recreational cocaine, but it, I, I think it's a very isolated case, but either way it's worth talking about because that's odd and yeah. I, and I, and I want to know why these. Oh, you're I feel right. Like it was two people. Two people. Yeah, wow. Maybe it was I, I got a real bad uh, headline on that. That was just mis- really misleading. Well, misleading. that's the world we live in now. That's all about headlines. But you, you give us, if you can, a little sum up of how and why this came down. Okay, let's see. Uh-huh. Do you think that's coming, though? I mean, while yeah, you're looking at that, do you think it's coming? I do. Across and the I board? was going to ask you how you felt about that, because yeah, if we I think can... it's coming. In a landmark ruling, a court in Mexico City has said two people should be allowed to use cocaine legally. The ruling really means that. The unnamed pair can use, but not sell small amounts of cocaine, according to Mexico. Blah blah. blah. I don't know. I don't want to get. It doesn't say why. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. I, I, mm, because they're very just, powerful and scary. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> One of them is the head of the Medlin cartel. I mean, yeah, how do you? How do you guys feel? I mean, I uh, obviously, if you've listened to anything on the Space Pod or even fucking How Bizarre at this point, you know I'm a, I'm a bit of a stoner. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of Mary Jane. Uh, I think it's great that it's legal here. Uh, what a time to be alive. But, I mean, how do you feel about something like Coke being legal? I've been of the mind that let's legalize it all and figure out a way of treating it like any other substance that's legal. Whether that's, I mean, that's what we're doing with pot. We're, well, it used to be. Legal- we're legalizing it and we're regulating it and we're taxing it and we're cultivating it and it's an industry. And if you are, you know, if you're pulled over and you're high, you're going to get a, a DUI the same as you would if you were drunk. I, I don't know how that looks in terms of logistics, but. I mean, you know, we, you want uh, meth to be legal? You know, it's made. It's, it's a man made thing. You know, with weed, it's a plant. It's just grown naturally, it's always has been. Well, it's it's far beyond what it was naturally. At oh, for this point. sure. It's 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 not like what you used to smoke thirty years ago. That's... We know what it looks like when it's illegal. Is it, it, are things going great in terms of drug use, addiction, uh, the cartel, the the black market of drugs? Is like does any of that look like a good success? <laughs> uh, so my, you know, I don't know that a straight across the board legalization of everything would be a good decision, but I don't think it's working now. I think a lot of people are dying <laughs> violent, brutal, cold blooded deaths because of the system that we've created right now. We know that people are insane to get some of these drugs, like l- clinically, literally insane to get them. They'll do anything. Um, you know, anyone that lives in a big city will tell you it's not like the, the gangsters or the, uh, you know, the thugs that you got to worry about. It's 
the fucking junkies because they'll they'll stick a knife in your heart in the off chance that you got eight bucks in your pocket. There is no more desperate <laughs> animal on planet Earth than a, a fucking junkie. And this is happening while everything is illegal. What does that world look like when things are legal? How is it? I, I, I'm so disconnected from all of this. I don't I don't I don't take the pot. So but I would wager <laughs> that the world has not gone to shit since we've legalized pot. I don't think things are terribly different, except you don't have to hide your joint when a cop strolls by your house. If you're on your porch taking a puff and you can go buy it in stores and yeah, crazy, crazy high strains. But this, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is a slippery slope that we shouldn't be going down, but I just don't, I don't think it's working in our current format. I don't think that you have the picture of success to fall back on when you're talking about not legalizing something. You know what I mean? Sure. You don't have a roadmap of this. But are you saying that you're on, you're, you're uh, on the fence about this, Chris, or you just fit up against it? I, I honestly have, I've never done Coke. I, I, I haven't either. See, I was curious. I, I don't. I'm, I'm sure we talked about this before, but I've never done it. But man, after watching three seasons of Narcos, I considered it. <laughs> mm. Well, there's got to be something to it, but there's got to be something to meth too. And I've never been drawn oh, to that. Yeah, yeah, I've never been drawn toward uppers in general. I've, I've taken yeah. some hardcore downers, almost the hardest of core downers, <laughs> maybe hardest the hardest core. core downer. But I've never been drawn to uppers. Um, but hey, when people we- describe what meth feels like or really good coke feels like who wouldn't want to try that but a rational human being can see (laughs) what a lot of these people turn into in a lot of the lives that they live and a lot of how they make their day-to-day decisions there's not i don't know that many casual meth users now coke i will say this i i do see a lot of casual coke users can i can i um i think that um Coke potentially could be legal, um, but it 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 fucks people up in a way that that alcohol, even alcohol, doesn't. You know what I mean? But it's a similar thing. Yeah, my uh, I'm one of our buddies that passed away, uh, Niemeyer Jeff. Yeah. Uh, we smoked Coke uh, on top of weed. No, only like a couple times. I it was back when. Uh, a couple what was years, that like? It was only a couple of years out of high school. It was fucking horrible, dude. <laughs> It was fucking horrible, dude. You trying to sleep? You know, you're not sleeping, dude. I didn't sleep for fucking like 12 hours, man. And we smoked it like after work. Well, that's the whole point. (laughs) And it is. It's meant to keep you up all night so you could drink and drink all you can. Anyways, um, it it used to be legal, right? But it's it's not anymore. And there's all kinds of reasons why they took everything and, and made it illegal. And none of them have anything to do with public safety. And that's just kind of a bullshit thing right there. But um anyways i i think that meth itself actually would be terrible to legalize because it's it's just it's purely poison i mean it's it's fucking petroleum chemicals and just total poison you know what if we legalize it and we make organic soy free meth (laughs) (laughs) vegan meth wait wait is this meth (laughs) organic (laughs) you find some battery acid that's organic is this hand-picked by Ethnic people in uh, free places, whatever white people say, huh? <laughs> they're trying free to look. Free places. <laughs> yeah, old man that's coming up that we're gonna have to talk about, and it's about society, and it's about it's a bunch of kids. And dude, I'm telling you, these generations that are like of age right now, that are 20 and 21, are fucking idiots, man. Hmm. The whole, the Kardashian lifestyle wannabe shit. It's just horrible, dude. Well, it's bad. Yeah, and so uh, it's t- it's tough to know where. Well, you know, you give them fucking drugs, dude. And that's like a, giving them a little weapon because they don't. Know yeah, but you know it's, that it's the subsection. generation before us was saying that about us. Like there is such a disconnect it's, between it's, us and what we look back on uh, when we were very at, cyclical when we were at that age, and then we look back on or we look now on people that are seventeen, eighteen, twenty-five years old. 
we can't relate to it. Like we're looking at aliens and the things that come out of their mouth sound alien to us. But that's, I remember adults looking at us when we were kids thinking like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, you, do, you do we need want? to get you guys tested? Now I'm not saying people aren't getting dumber. I, I think that we're getting, we're, we're, we're evolving in a weird way. Um, and technology has a lot to do with that. The yeah. Entertainment has a lot to do with that. Um, this kind of feeds into where we're going with my uh, second part of the sex talk a bit with the the adaptation and evolution and what ultimately spawns that. But yeah, I don't know. It's it. I, I try to be patient and um, I guess open minded about looking <laughs> at the younger generations. Mostly, it just makes me feel old. I, like I don't. I tend to not look at them like they're stupid and they're uh <laughs> they're fucking up the entire planet i just tend to feel like i am losing touch with what is becoming more and more the norm and more and more i guess mainstream i'm losing touch with it and i'm i'm the dinosaur i'm the one that's on its way out and love it or hate it these people are on their way in and We've done a lot of good with our generation. We've done a lot of bad with our generation. And I think that every generation going back and you read like books of the old West that were written like a hundred years, 150 years ago, <laughs> it'd be like some teenager that uh, just feels like their parents don't understand. Right. <laughs> Kick a DJ. Uh, what is it? DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. <laughs> the funny that DJ Jazzy Jeff at one point, his name came first. <laughs> Do you think when if they ever do a reunion show, it'll be the Fresh Prince and uh, that other <laughs> that other guy? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, does anyone have anything else they want to toss out before we get on to second part of my super dish? This is a quick one. Uh, the uh, you know remember uh, Elon Musk? Mm-hmm. Is, nope, uh, never heard of him. Prize <laughs> Prize Tesla has made one circle around the sun. <laughs> oh, the one he launched. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's right. actually orbited over the. Uh, Earth, but there's something I didn't know about. Wait, 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 wait. Something has flown around the sun? Yeah, his Tesla he put up in space. Hmm. Yeah, it's flown that, over. Seemed, that seems impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the moon was a far, far yeah, trip, right there. How far is the fucking sun from us? It's like 92 million miles or something. Yeah. No bigs. Well, something I didn't know about. Like, huh. he, he actually really is sincerely would like to nuke Mars. And I was thinking, like, why the fuck would you want to nuke Mars? You know, as a terrorist. Elon Musk does? Yeah. He huh. was actually, like, saying we should do this because it'll it, we'll be able to inhabit it faster. And well, what he's talking about why? is nuking the poles to warm up the planet to get it more of a, you know, terraformed thing. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know, you can kind of see it like in a... It would it would happen to us if we if we were like completely nuked. The debris in the the air would like basically block out the sun for years. That would cause a global cooling, which would put us in another ice age. Uh, what he's talking about is actually warming up Mars, which is a very hot planet anyway. Huh. You know what I mean? I nuked the poles last night. One at each time, you know what I'm saying? Is he, he went on national television and said, mm-hmm. I want to nuke me Mars? How was, was that, how was that reaction? Faster. Because there's, there's, there's a slower way process of being able to you know, climatize the planet, hmm. which he's, he's speculating warming it up would do it. Wait, oh. it's, it's pretty hot, I oh, thought. I'm too dumb to know if he's full of shit or not, so uh, I don't know. Right. I would. I would listen. I'm going to believe. He, well, I don't know. God, Mars is not hot at all. Mars is freezing cold. I thought Mars was extremely hot. When That's it Venus. Snow. Venus is Mars is way farther away from the sun than we are. It's there's like no atmosphere. It's like cold as shit. Yeah. Like women and men. Am I right, folks? <laughs> I remember laughing so hard when I saw that the dude that wrote those books got divorced. I don't know. Men are from Mars. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm a relationship anyway. expert. Yeah, go ahead. Though. Anyway, that's kind of what his uh, whole thing was, was uh, nuking the poles, which, you know, you could see that. I guess <laughs> it's my favorite that. new term. Water. Yeah. It's on the poles. There, there, there is water on the poles of Mars. Well... Let's nuke it and see what happens. Fuck it. I'm uh, the older I get. I'm I'm like let's nuke it and see what happens. <laughs> like fuck it. it. We're doing. I mean to go back to Lyle's earlier point. It's like I, like ultimately, aren't we kind of doomed? Like something's gonna doom us out, right? It's just a question of what. 
What, what? and when? And what? Uh, <laughs> but in my lifetime, yeah, let's nuke it. See what happens. <laughs> like Chris said, this is a this is a problem for future me, or mm-hmm. maybe even mini me's future me. Well, anyway, I don't have a mini me yet. Well, let's get uh, wrapping up my <laughs> future of sex conversation. Mm. Chapter three: Thunking in space. Most people, I think, know about the experiments that NASA has been doing, like full-on official NASA experiments regarding fucking in space. You know, the mm-hmm. low-gravity sex suits that we've talked about, that they're essentially Velcro jumpsuits, and they it Velcros two partners together while they slip it in. But uh, the real trick to overcome, uh, pun, <laughs> is gravity in terms of, thrustability and you know just imagine do do a little experiment tonight when you're uh, oh. going to bone town on your partner this eve mm-hmm. just nuke the poles <laughs> nuke the poles Stop see it. what happens mm-hmm. <laughs> stop for a second to yeah. think about how much sex is reliant upon gravity i mean try thrusting or pounding in low g's son <laughs> it's well, all I mean, gravity it goes back to like trying to bang in a fucking waterbed you know <laughs> yeah, that's probably the, that's the first step in training for fucking in space. I mean, fuck the apple. Newton should have used reverse cowgirl to decipher gravity. Reverse cowgirl. By the way, brief tangent. If you could, <laughs> the first position you'd want to try in a let's say it's zero gravity environment. What would you want to do? Would you? I I feel like I would want to go with a sixty nine because my only problem with a sixty nine is uh-huh. sometimes it's a little too much, uh, not weight but too much. Like, how do I want to say? I told this? you, you go on bottom, Ron. How many times I got to tell you how to do a sixty nine? <laughs> <laughs> but, but we run rushed. on top. <laughs> but if you didn't have any gravity, the like I feel like the world would sort of open up in a, a different way, sexually speaking. I, I'm sure, right? Have you seen uh, the Expanse at all? The, uh, that show that's really no. good. No, that, like, uh, and it's funny because some... we had Cass Anvar at WinCon. <laughs> I never did. Yeah, that. He, it's a really fantastic show, and there's a Such pretty great zero G se- sex scene in the first app mm. where you're like, "Oh, I never thought about that." Obviously, oh, that's what I want. So, what did they do that you hadn't thought about? Like fucking against a wall, like they're on the ceiling, and then the gravity. Oh, kicks oh in. what they... a feeling uh, yeah. when you're fucking on the ceiling. I like to think you'd have to like like mount some rings or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh like, shit, that's a good idea. Yeah, flipsy dipsy. You could spin around a yeah, whole different definition. Oh my god, the spinner! <laughs> you imagine just floating and then spinning the girl on your dick, like actually spinning. I wonder if you could do you could do that. Of course you could. Zero you know, it's gonna be weird wow, with zero exciting. G is a is a nice zero G golden shower, right? Mm. <laughs> Beautiful, <laughs> messy. Uh, you know, Wouldn't it just be like, <laughs> like dodging? <laughs> it's been taking a bizarre turn. One might I say. feel like it would be dodging like gelatin squirts, <laughs> right? <laughs> like yeah, little tiny right? Jello shots. Can you imagine but, just pissing Jello? I don't know that would woof, be surpri- uh, satisfying. <laughs> Although I wonder what happens when it hits your skin, like when that <laughs> urine. Uh, yeah, still with us, folks. <laughs> when that <laughs> urine jello shot <laughs> hits your skin, does it like yeah. spread out or does it just bounce off? It's got to yeah. it's got to stick to you to some degree. Interesting questions, and we've never seen uh, some of these things. But l- let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> let's go back to you know the idea of hopping in a suit and getting some sort of penetration. But now. We're looking at two things. First of all, like we just mentioned, how to manipulate each other's bodies in a way that can lead to procreation. But secondly, and to me, far more importantly, I think far more importantly for the the sake of humanity is how to change our ideas about what sex could be in a low G situation and so that it's enjoyable and not just this scientific session that ends with a, uh, you know, a productive orgasm. This is my kind of science, but apparently... Isaac Isimov also wrote uh, about this, and he wrote a short a short story called "Sex in a Spaceship," which isn't that a Rob Zombie song? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not even like my usual joke. I think there is a Rob Zombie song called that or something. But his hypothesis was 
that fucking in space would be rad. <laughs> and it was like, it wasn't about the clinical or the uh, scientific angle of it. It was, it was about the creative sort of science fiction aspect of it. Like, yeah, you could seriously spin a human being on your dick or you could fuck on the ceiling or whatever. Yeah. You get rings involved. Anything your imagination could conceive, I suppose. Uh, so we can look forward to that. But something I found hilarious <laughs> is in 2015, Pornhub started a crowdfunding page to make the first porn in space. <laughs> and they planned... Did they ever do it? Well, no. They planned... Sexploration was the name of the project. And they were going to do this using a private space program. I don't... I'm guessing SpaceX. I mean, they were the one... They would be the ones to consult <laughs> SpaceX. Space Triple X. No. Space. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But they only raised a few hundred thousand of their, like, I think it was a $4 million goal. So instead, they shot a little classic called the Uranus Experiment Part 2. <laughs> and this was using... <laughs> low gravity planes to film a zero G cum shot. <laughs> I got to see this. I, I had to this. see it for myself. And, uh, it's, how many takes? it's kind of, I don't know how many takes it took. I think they got it in the first try. I mean, it's this? just a, a 30, a 30 second thing, but yeah, research it. So if you're going to look at it, I would go to, I think I saw it on Pornhub. Uh, just put in the Uranus experiment part two cum shot. <laughs> <laughs> For the, for the uh, listeners at home, when, what they're talking about is they're in a plane and they go right up the very tippy top of you know the air uh, before you know it gets in space and they dive down and that gives us the negative g forces. And what they do is they they try to get it on you know because they are falling mm-hmm. and they're floating in that period, but that time period's less than a minute. Yeah, it's very 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 short. That's why I was like. How many takes did it take? To- <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many dives they took before he uh, I'm was sure able to the squirt. guy's jacking all the way up. Like, here we go. Yeah, he's ready. ready. He's ready to go. But it looks, to me, I think it's kind of neat. It looks like coming in a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? You've never done that? And if you haven't, you should. It's, it's molecular science of the best type. Are you pulling that up? Are you guys watching that video at all? No. All right. We'll check it out later. It's. I think that's exactly as it looks. It's like it just sort of squirts out and floats around in, yeah, little clumps and uh, science. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Chapter four: The future of gender. Now we are in. A pretty interesting time concerning gender and whatever you feel about the topic. I think we can all agree that it's complicated right now <laughs> and a little a little insane. But most of what we're talking about in terms of gender right now is identification, right? Like, yeah, because we do have chromosomes. We do have genetics. We can have provable science like this is your gender and that's your gender. But I wanted to know where we were heading regarding genetics and chromosomes because there have been so many dystopian science fiction books and films that focus on this sort of evolution where we all become one sex or one, you know, like a one note species. And I always wonder why that was so common. And I think some of the going theories play into this because binary sex or, you know, male versus female the male versus female notion of gender is that in the early stages of humanity, like as a species, we, we needed one thing above all other things and that was survival. So we needed to procreate to survive and we needed two genders to procreate as simple as that. But now we have other options, uh, you know, be it artificial insemination, uh, medicine, or even adoption for that matter. The thing is we know as a collective species, like we know (laughs) it's ingrained into us that of all the things that are likely to undo us as a creature on this planet, it won't be from a lack of being able to make more of us, you know, on a, as a whole, like, yeah, you can shrink this down to where these people aren't able to procreate and, and, you know, whatever, but somewhere out there in that evolutionary path is that knowledge and that experience it's being noted and it's being imprinted on our DNA. And I found this notion really interesting because as a hetero male (laughs) that never had any doubts about being so I've been curious about bisexuals. Uh, that that make me bi curious. 
mm-hmm. and homosexuals that went through a phase of not being sure what they were for a while. I've n- I don't know how to relate to that because I've never experienced that. But now the whole gender issue is all over the place. And I, th- I think most skeptics about this, well, some people are just saying it's attention-seeking behavior, but... I think a lot of people are like, this is something that's just in your mind. Like this is a feeling. This is something that you personally feel connected to. You were born with a dick and male chromosomes and genetics, but you, you feel like a woman. So who's to say that you're not, but science can say that you're not. This is where it's tricky right now, but right. (laughs) But we're changing. And like, you know, we, we've got, some pretty interesting science popping up about how and why things may be in a state of flux concerning true gender at the moment. And as awkward uh, and scattershot as a lot of this gender talk in present day seems to be, this could very well be a markable moment in the chain of our gender evolution, right? Because we know, we know homosexuality, bisexuality, asexuality, uh, and sex changes exist in nature. Like, we have examples of that. <laughs> Repeat that. Sex changes exist in nature. You know, we uh, when this comes up, the clownfish is always something. There are other species, of course, but the clownfish always comes up. It can change its gender as needed, both singularly and as a, a collective, to adapt to whatever shortage or abundance there may be in their particular environment. So we know that we are going... <laughs> to be okay we know that we don't need to rely on these one things to survive as a species and i realize again that many people think this is all just nonsense people are just trying to be so different that they can't even just be male or female but it got me thinking like where does evolution start like where does adaptation start doesn't on some level doesn't it have to (laughs) start in your brain like we we look at our surroundings, we use our brain to acknowledge what we have and what we don't have. Adaptation would be some sort of genetic mutation toward a better way for us using that knowledge. So if it starts with knowledge, I don't know, that got my brain going down a rabbit hole where it's like maybe all of this that's happening right now is a realization that we don't need to be male or female like we once did. We don't need that for survival. So what does that mean singularly and, again, as a a species collectively? And I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I know that's shocking. But (laughs) it got my brain down a rabbit hole. I was like, oh, I think that's an interesting thought. What if if thought and acknowledgement of where you are as a species in your chain to some degree is where – the seeds are planted for that next pivot. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, on a, on a, on a, how bizarre topic, uh, that's kind of what the mainstream idea of aliens are is that they're coming back through time to pick up human DNA. That's why they kidnap them to, because their, their, their genes and stuff are so far gone. They can't produce. So they have to like take bits and pieces. It's not my idea. It's, it's an ongoing kind of theory. So that theory is that they have mutated or evolved away from Society. having gender so they can't reproduce. So they need help. That's why they've been uh, abducting people. Well, it's an interesting point, too. That would be – I mean that would be the other end of this. Like you mm-hmm. could you, – things never stop changing. I, I, I think things are constantly adapting uh, or evolving or are – is a crocodile today exactly what a crocodile was a million years ago? I don't, I don't fucking know. Do we know? Do we have evidence that it's exactly the same? Maybe it is. Maybe there are things that, but that doesn't mean it's not changing. You know, these things can take eons to change. And, and uh, so who knows if, so let's say that there is an alien race out there and they got to where we were. We were like, we had to fuck to survive. <laughs> Nature made fucking feel good. So that we're attracted to survival because the sound of a crying baby isn't necessarily attractive, <laughs> but getting in on that hoo-ha that sounds like a hee-haw. That is how we survive, and then we go through that for a few thousand years or whatever. And finally we realize, yeah, going back to last week's show, we got sex robots now, or we got implants that can give us orgasms by hitting a button, or we have virtual reality porn, whatever it is that could potentially lead us away to 
true engagements with another human being that could, even if only accidentally, cause procreation. <laughs> a lot of people are here accidentally. There's just no way around that. Most of us are. Uh, I would wager. <laughs> I feel like most of us were accident. And, and not necessarily like, oh, the condom broke or the birth control didn't kick in. But like, well, we weren't planning on getting pregnant, but, you know, we decided to go with it. I feel like a lot of us are in that <laughs> dynamic. Present. That's that's survival. That's how we survive. Nature <laughs> made fucking feel good so that we would do it and be careless about it sometimes. And, be like, nope. <laughs> and then only afterward being like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I might have made another me. Let's say that we evolved past that and we have all all these things where there's drugs and all these uh, or all these uh, devices that we've already talked about that stimulate all those things on a better level or at least a, a sustainable level. And so we start getting away from fucking for that reason. Maybe our bodies are like, OK, well, you're not going to use this semen. I'm going to stop producing it. Or you're not going to use these ovaries. I'm going to stop producing it. And you're not your mammaries are going to turn into something that could never produce milk. Maybe we do become something that is incapable because we're not using it. <laughs> use it or lose it. That's a, a million year old saying. I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean that those aliens couldn't reverse engineer that <laughs> to some degree but i don't know maybe that shoots my theory out the door and it's not even really a theory it's just a, a thought uh if i smoked pot i would say it was a a stoner thought uh, on the drive home it's like wait a minute where does evolution and adaptation start it, I, I feel like it it's connected to the brain i feel like it is something that stems from knowing your environment knowing your what you want out of your existence even if you're a fucking lizard um, and certainly would with a human being. Good Lord, we're, we're capable of thought on so many different levels. Plastic surgery is another part of the gender issue that I wanted to bring up real quick before we get moving on. This is likely to have, I don't know if uh, an evolutionary effect, but <laughs> I think that the next, well, I just not my theory. There's, I, I, I subscribe to the theory that the next generation of DNA will be a mixture or the next generation of plastic surgery will be a mixture of plastic and DNA. We've already been talking about this. Like, you know, for years and years, we've been hearing stories about, well, we can see that, you know, your baby is set chromosomally to be a victim of Down syndrome. We can fix that right here. We can manipulate this genetic code we can take this we, it's like a recipe like we can get add a little bit here take out a little bit there now forgetting the moral issues involved with that kind of discussion which i would like to bring up on the show at some point imagine sort of that scenario with beauty or gender like if we are actually able to add things that are true parts instead of prosthetics or enhancements or Something that's functional, but not really like you can get like a, a, a theme. Someone who's born with a vagina can get a dick, but we're not quite there where it's like a real dick that can get somebody pregnant. But we're heading there like we're definitely heading there. I wonder how that's going to play on. And maybe that one fact sort of eliminates all the other issues because we'll be able to just dial in whatever we want. We could also dial in the biggest dick you ever wanted the most perfect tits. This is some twilight zone shit happening already with this theory, but let's say that we eliminate that big dick complex, <laughs> uh, which is actually small dick complex. If you think about it, but you know, would vanity in general become a thing of the past? Taking away our uniqueness and differences is something that we've sort of worried about for a long time, but there's a lot of people that seem to be heading like ushering us into let's not focus on our differences and our uniqueness. We're not individuals. We're a collective thing and we should work together collectively. Again, this is the theme of a lot of dystopians. Doesn't mean it's wrong, but uh, we do seem eager to head toward that by following every fashion trend imaginable. And I think when fashion meets science and vanity and the growing gender issue that we have right now, I think some interesting changes are going to happen in the uh, human race quite quickly. Do you think, do you think uh, that might actually turn into a fashion statement? Like uh, people getting dicks on their elbows and shit? <laughs> I, I don't know about dick bows, but uh, well, the, <laughs> I, I mean, to, 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 sh <laughs> to shrink to, their fucking kneecap. 
to shrink your question into like a more like on the moment thing, a lot of people think that being transgender is a fashion statement. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm sa- this goes back to what I'm saying. Like a lot of people are dismissing these people who say they were born a female, or born a man, and then uh, they want to use this bathroom and they want to have these rights or they want to have access to these things. I don't know. I don't know any of it. I, I, this is all foreign to me. I, I know that I'm a heterosexual man and I have a dick. There's no gray area for me. But imagine if there were. Like, imagine if you didn't feel like what you were given at birth. That's a major thing to live with. Yeah, nothing tough. nothing you read, nothing that is preached to you, um, and nothing that you hope for is going to change that. So what do you do there? The The fact that the world is changing for those people... I don't see that as being a bad thing on any level. What it means ultimately for the future of humanity, I don't know, maybe nothing. Maybe it is uh, something that's like a, a surface level, if you will. But I don't know. I feel like we're we're possibly heading towards something pretty major with all of those things coming together. Again, no pun intended. Um, but uh, anyway, let's move on. Chapter 5, Orgasm Science. As mentioned, (laughs) we have two reasons to fuck, essentially, survival and coming. And orgasms are a pretty big deal, (laughs) I think most of us can agree, and yet many people can't do it, like, at all. Uh, and even more people can't do it often. Like, like there's a, a larger percentage of people can do it, but they don't do it often. And, uh, if mostly for psychological reasons, but some of them are for physical issues. A very few men statistically can't get their rocks off about 5% to be specific, but almost 30% of women never wow. ever orgasm high? 30%. That's three out of 10 son. That's a lot. Think about how many people you've been with. Well, at least three of them are probably faking. Mm-hmm. By the way, I was talking by the way, <laughs> by the way, I, I went Australian just now. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about, and he was telling at the bar, you know, one of these bartender conversations and the dude was, I don't know him well, but he was like, yeah, I've been dating this girl, but I'm pretty sure she's like faking orgasm. I was like, uh, I'm not even buying it. I'm like, well, talk to her about it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want it to be weird. It's like, I just, I feel like she's being fake and that makes me not trust her. I'm like, Aww. I don't know, man. I, I feel like if she's, if she's if she's faking an orgasm, she's probably trying to make you feel good about what's happening. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad kind of manipulation. Ultimately, it, it'd be great if everyone could be honest. But <laughs> ultimately, if that's happening, then you both need to talk about it. Otherwise, it's never going to get it. resolved either way. Yeah, if you think your your uh, significant other is faking orgasm, I think it's fair to bring it up. But um. I don't know. I think that they were only a few dates into it, and he was just overthinking. <laughs> like, dude, just fucking go along with it. Like, ease up on the shit. You can get into the deep stuff once you're, you're living together. <laughs> like, go easy. Just have some fun. Be safe. Be smart. Anyway, um, three out of ten. I found that crazy. But we have a ton of science on the importance of orgasm, not just for feeling good, <laughs> because we are more interested in coming than most things. We have way more scientists working around the clock on orgasm technology than we do AIDS at the moment. That's an actual statistic you can look up to. But, but I, I mean, let's be honest. We kind of got AIDS nipped in the butt, no pun intended, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's no longer a death Don't we? Now, I mean, like, certain, you can, right? yeah, you can get... Uh, uh, I don't hear about I mean, AIDS very often. You just hear HIV. It but, sounds like we're real close to a, a cure. Right yeah. Now. If it's not there already. Crazy. It really looks like it was going to rip rip us to uh, shreds as a species for a while there. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so research shows that large amounts of oxytocin is released in our brains during and after an orgasm. Now, oxytocin is nicknamed the cuddle hormone <laughs> for reasons that are probably obvious. But mm-hmm. uh, sandwich hormone. <laughs> what's that? The sandwich hormone. The, sa- <laughs> the sandwich one? Like you want a sandwich after you... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> You're like, well, what do we got? Turkey yeah. or 
time for sandwich. Uh, no. <laughs> now, we obviously don't love everybody we fuck, but if both part if both parties orgasm, uh, that's an experience that stays with you likely for life on some level, but for those who are in love, this can be like the thing that bonds you together, even in wacky times, you know, that's why, like, like one of the many reasons that a physical relationship is so important. Like when times are tough, it's like, if you can just get together and get each other off every now and again, you can remember that you're not creatures that just, that solely deal with bills and dirty dishes, you know, we can get bogged down with that stuff and remember why you were ever drawn to another human being at all, let alone this specific one. But it's good to remember that the people studying this aren't just trying to get you off. Like they're looking into the scientific benefit. But they are trying to let everyone experience one of the most powerful things you can, which is an orgasm, a natural orgasm, but for important reasons. So where where are we with that? Now, as mentioned, a lot of the reasons people can't get off is mental, especially women. Guys tend to be more physical. Like if out of that 5% that can't get off, it tends to be uh, something like actually happening health wise. Not always, mm. but again, it can be either or both. Now, past sexual trauma is a big factor. Uh, religious upbringing or even seeing you know, the, a pig humping your leg as a kid could uh, affect your ability to let a, who knows what gets planted in your brain and is tied to the feeling of pleasure, the feeling of the thoughts that come along with imagining sexual situations. There's a lot that could be piggybacked onto it and experiences, of course. But aside from medical conditions, there is more and more interest in ramping up the intensity of orgasms. Now, Kegel exercises, or Kegel, as some people say, have been shown to help um, occasional abstinence, all that. But that's old news. In the real world, like taking orgasms to the next level is almost a scary thought for me because <laughs> I'm fortunate to be pretty good at coming. <laughs> like, sometimes it's almost painful, right? Like, it's <laughs> they just call like. Me. They call me a cum pro. <laughs> Old cum pro. Just look at him. Oh, there he goes. But I honestly don't know if I could handle them being that much more intense. I feel like my cum face is already like Sonny, the Cocoa Puff bird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like cross-eyed. Oh, <laughs> it's like rambling and hopping across the room. That's what it feels like in my... I, I'd like to think that I... <laughs> We, we talked on the old show. There's, this, I tried to find a descent to you guys. I couldn't find it, but there's an amazing compilation somewhere online of dudes trying to look cool while they're coming, or trying to like hold back their, you know, <laughs> their goober face while squirting a load across some titties and failing miserably. And it was like the best thing. I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's like it takes over your entire nervous system like you do go squirrely you can anyway um but so imagine ramping that up now obviously the the science is probably geared toward people that are having them but maybe not very strong ones but i just kept thinking it's like some true blood shit where you're like on next level fucking it's like well how much better could it actually get i suppose it could you don't know until you've had it it'll be interesting interesting to see if uh yeah these God blessed scientists can take us to the next level with some sort of drug or enhancement, especially for people that can't come at all, because that is, that is something that I think is very important <laughs> to, to work on getting fixed. Yeah. Go ahead. Lau. I feel a lot of that has to be of uh, people being uh, selfish lovers, man. How to say, you know, cause usually it, it's men and it's, they're in and out. They don't even try, you know? Mm. Well, it's, FYI, ladies, Lyle's Five a single man. Lyle's <laughs> a single man. You know? That's true. He's just put out his resume. But share, that's true. Share for, a heart, share a kidney. I think that that would be a, a big part of why some people can't get off with other people. Like some women can't get off with dudes or some lovers can't get off with some lovers. But we're talking about people that can't get off at all, whether they're masturbating or using a dildo. or So, you know, most people can get themselves off even if they can't get off with someone else, like they can't get in that right head space. So they're, they're up in their own head about it and anxiety, whatever. But so this is, this is actually next level from that. But yeah, I would wager that there's a, a an, we're selfish people 
as a rule. Like I think just watching the way people live all of their lives and how they dispose of trash or lack thereof or, you know, go to concerts or how they drive. We are a selfish, you know, creature. And I think that that absolutely is going to translate in the old sack. But uh, aside from device and medicinal help, the future of orgasm science seems more focused on sensory or nerve manipulation. Uh, my grandma had uh, – <laughs> it's a weird transition, I realize, all of a sudden. But my grandma had a really, really – my dearly late grandma – had a really, really bad, fucked up back. Like the last 10 years of her life where she lived in pain like – constantly and then there is this surgery that came along where they could actually sever a couple of your nerves in the back and it's like all of a sudden like the, the the same grinding and arthritis or whatever was happening back there was still happening but the nerves were disconnected so she couldn't feel the pain it's sort of a reverse of that where <laughs> you have connectivity down there but it's not working so you can they're they're focusing on like micro neuro, neurological operations that could be had to just sort of <laughs> connect point A to point B. And a lot of times uh, there are physical things preventing those signals from being sent. Multiple sclerosis tends to be uh, something that a lot of people are having weird sexual things with. Sometimes incredibly intense orgasm. Sometimes you can't get off at all. So they're studying that. They're studying how the lesions on the brain that are involved with multiple sclerosis can feed into the sky. It's not just a sex neurologically speaking, but anything uh, concerning the nerves. Deadening some of those nerves has been shown to ramp down the effect in people who have sensitivity issues where they can't stand, like if you, you try to go down on somebody and they're like, oh, that's too much. So they can't experience sex because they're like, even with the condom, I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't do it. It's like, you know, I clipped my fingernails too low and rubbed it against sandpaper. <laughs> it's like shoo, straight to the core. But so they're doing the opposite with some people where they're ramping down uh, the sensitivity of those nerves. And sorry, Grandma. <laughs> that will be, hopefully be the last time you come up in a clit based chat on an international podcast. But it anyway, won't. It won't. Anyway, finally, my last thought when I was driving home today because I was stuck in traffic for 45 minutes, I was thinking we're with all of how all of this usually ends in science fiction, how we go so far. And speaking of cloud, uh, cloud atlas, John Mark, we go so far into the future that the only place to go at some point is back. We we do this with music every now and again, you know the whole grunge thing, the Seattle music. I've been watching a documentary on that lately. I was like, God, it really was a, a fist up the ass of all the overblown, overproduced bullshit music that was happening at that time, and it like it killed a lot of that like instantly. It just killed it because we went so far with it. We went so far with the hairspray and the the pyrotechnics and the costumes on stage and the platforms and all that that you. You had to reset it to go back to flannel and ripped jeans and just natural distortion from a, a speaker that was turned up too loud. And I think this happens with fashion. This happens with entertainment. You know, we get to a point where we want we want to go back. And I wonder if that will happen. They kind of touch on this in Barbarella where you remember where the, there's like all the fucking machines like Barbarella goes to the other planet and sees all these futuristic machines like the sex machines and the new way of fucking where you just orgasmatron like, yeah you you touch hands and you just like use your brains to fuck and she's all about it because it's like new and exciting but there's a dude that she ends up fucking and he's like no i want to do it like you cave people from earth do it <laughs> it's like oh that's the exciting shit and i wonder if there will come a time where we'll lose interest in a lot of this stuff and start heading back the other way i suppose we'll have to wait and see, anywho, should we get onto some news quiz and get the fuck on out of here? I mean, uh, weird trivia with Christopher yeah, F. Hart. Weird trivia. Mm, shall we f fire up the uh, theme song here? Yes, please. Back to front. Weird trivia with Christopher F. Hart. Stings me every time. <laughs> it has like a real um, 
it outro like that do, 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 do. like the little uh colitis i don't know what you call that thing that you hear at the fucking circus the do 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 you know mm, the fucking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it sounds like uh sounds like something from the it movie yeah i dig it all right y'all ready for this <laughs> yeah all right that was our best You're yet, not I think. All ready for this, I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, la- oh, excuse me. John Mark won again last week, so he's going to go first again. We're going to make him go first here. Motherfucker. Keep the same oh, order. Shit. John Mark, Ronster, and Lyle. Four questions here. Let's get it started. Uh, if Question one. Uh, if you grew up ensconced in comic books like I did, you're probably marveling at the quality and quantity of comic book movies being released these days. But you might also be surprised to learn that this MCU movie was passed up by over 30 different writers that felt the character or characters in it were too obscure to make a movie that was successful. What movie was difficult to obtain a writer for? Movie we all know. Is it A, Iron Man? Is it B? MCU is Marvel something universe. What's the C? Cinematic. Cinematic. Okay. Is it B, Guardians of the Galaxy? Is it C, Black Panther? Hmm. <laughs> or is it D, Ant-Man? One of these movies was passed up by over 30 writers before they found someone to write the script for it. Lyle starts, excuse me, John Mark starts off. Well, damn. Um, I, you know, I'm going to say Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Because I. It's like the biggest yeah. one, yeah? It, it is, but I haven't. Like, those characters I, were totally unfamiliar to me, and I was a huge comic book nerd. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, same but I heard of Ant Man, mm-hmm. you know? Heard of Black mm-hmm. Panther, heard of Iron Man, so I'm sure. going with Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Ron, mm, I'm leaning towards Black Panther, but that also might be the Black Herring. <laughs> the Black uh, <laughs> If I may use that expression. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm going to go with black, black herring. Yeah, black panther. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll be damned. No, I'm going to go with John Mark's uh, explanation of it because it is kind of makes sense. Right. I, I actually heard of every kind of book <coughs> except for Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I was. Okay. I remember being caught off guard by all this shit. It just seemed like all of a sudden. All these characters were there. I was like, "Who the fuck is he? Like, what? What the <laughs> fuck did she come from?" Because I was the same. Star like, Lord. J- John Mark and I have talked about this before. It's like we were comic book nerds. Like, I re- I read like entire runs for years of Spider Man. <laughs> I would walk yeah. down to the. I couldn't buy them all. I would buy the the you know the important ones, but I'd read it in ten minutes there down at the mini mart. Um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, this shit was just everywhere. It's uh, yeah, strange, strange all world. Right. Question two. Uh, a few weeks ago, Georgia Southern's quarterback got pulled over for speeding. Uh, shortly after the stop, the officers noticed a white substance on the outside of his car, which would eventually test positive for coke and lead to his arrest. Mm. I imagine he was maybe trying to throw it out or something that got on his car. Yeah. Um, no, the uh, football coke. T- <laughs> I was just trying to get to Mexico. They were going to legalize it for me. Um, <laughs> I'm one of the, the two. Yeah, one of the two. The football player tried to explain the white substance on his car away as this. What did he say it was? Was it A, gravy? (laughs) (laughs) Sure, it's got to dry eventually. Was it B, bird poop? Yeah. Was it C, spit wads? Mm, A little more obscure. Or was it D, dried semen? That's not Coke, officer. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's my passerby jizz. Sixty miles. <laughs> John Mark. Um, right. Semen to get I'm out a, of trouble. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go with bird poop. Okay, Ronster. <laughs> Fuck it! I already went with the. Black herring. I'm going with the white herring this time. Let's go with, <laughs> let's go with dried semen. That's what my cokehead might the say. Time, not the of... last note, the first. You've said those exact words. <laughs> I've tried black. Let's taste the world of black. Okay. I'm going to hell. I realize uh, that, people. <laughs> Lyle? Yeah, I'm going with bird poop. All right. 
Mm. Question. Off, One of my usual mm-hmm. island. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. Uh, headlines were made recently after uh, a well-to-do couple in India brought, uh, excuse me, bought their son a brand new BMW, but upset that he didn't receive a Jaguar. The kid did this with the car. Talking about spoiled dickhead. Uh, so he was upset he didn't get the Jag he was hoping for. They just bought him a lowly BMW and he did this with it. Was <laughs> sure. it? Was it? Hey, anyone would be he sold it on eBay for just one dollar. Mm. Was it B? He let people hit it with a sledgehammer for five dollars a pop. Yeah, that sounds more like a spoiled little bitch. Was it C? He pushed it straight into a river. Or was it D? He packed it full of black market explosives and blew it up. Okay. Well, that's tough. Uh, John Mark. Yeah. That is tough. Mm. They all seem reasonably stupid. <laughs> mm. Um. Dang. Um. I, mm, let's let's go with the uh, black market explosives. Uh, when in doubt. Okay. Ronster. Yeah, I like the idea of selling it on eBay for a buck. I'm torn between that and pushing it in the river. Or some sort of... Well, sledgehammers? Was there a sledgehammer one in there? Yeah, five bucks a whack to anyone in a minute. I don't know. They're all, they all work. I'm going to go with the, the eBay. eBay. Okay. Yeah. Lyle. He could show that $1 bill to his <laughs> parents. And I'm thinking the only way, like, like you could make money and then still make money would be like the five dollar whack thing, because you could still mm-hmm. make money on that. And that would actually be a, a tour. We we God, I want to say we did that in high school on some yeah f- fundraisers. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. But like that guy, all I'd have to do is say, well, somebody came and you know my car, you know, my insurance will cover it, and then I can stick the money and buy a new car after it's totaled. Yeah. But uh, so we'll go with that. Okay. Let's move on to the last question here. Question four. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of Star Wars, uh, while making one of the Star Wars movies, George Lucas technically created a word that really didn't exist. Uh, now, this word is still used all around the world for a variety of uses this day. Mm-hmm. What word are we talking about? What word did George Lucas create? for the Star Wars universe that became k- kind of a household wor- wor- word with maybe, uh, I can't say much more. All right, was it A, droid? Droid, was it B, oh, okay. Yeah. Padawan? Yeah. Was it C, saber? Okay. Or was it D, imperial? I'm glad John Mark's going first on this one. Although I have, uh, I'm definitely leaning toward one. John Mark? I'm, I'm going to go with droid. Okie dokes. Ronster? Yeah, I'm feeling droid too. I mean, God knows Android was kicking around, but to shorten it, someone's got to be the first to do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, If you listen to the old uh, podcast, you listen to a lot of that. Shortening of words. Um, (laughs) Give me one example. I want to say droid was already there. Uh, What was was, was the Padawan? Padawan. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go with the Padawan, but I want to get through this as a little line analyzation. <laughs> what, was, what, was, uh-huh. what was through? Oh, uh, saber, imperial. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, saber has been around forever. It's been a sword. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And imperial is butter, but <laughs> <laughs> and the imperial yeah. butter. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna go with Padawan. Okay, let's Just see how you guys do here. <laughs> John Mark, did you forget to mute before you start peeing that guy? <laughs> no, it's the it's the kitchen sink. All right, that's fair. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. did happen once before on the old show. <laughs> a couple times, actually. All right, what do we got? <laughs> okay, let's go over the answers here, see how you guys did. Uh, question one, if you grew up enjoying comic books as much as I did, what a fucking time to be alive. But you might be surprised to learn that uh, it took over 30 writers before they found someone that would write Iron Man, the first uh, MCU movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a geez, big one that's too. Crazy. 
Yeah, because you know you got to think about it. Although it's not Iron Man until it's Iron Man, right? Yeah, I mean it was the beginning of the MCU, and it's been pretty consistent throughout it. I mean, don't get me wrong, a couple of duds early on. It's easy to armchair quarterback that, but yeah, if you think about it, like who was talking about Iron Man before Iron Man? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, so nobody got that right. No big deal. No big deal. Three more questions here. With Mm -hmm. swing with a miss. Uh, question two, a few weeks ago, Georgia Southern's quarterback got pulled over for speeding. Shortly after the stop, the officers noticed a white substance on the outside of his car, which would eventually test positive for coke and lead to his arrest. When the officers asked him what it was, he simply said that it was bird poop. I don't know what this stuff is on the outside of my car. I don't even bother yes. playing this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> John Mark and Lyle got that correct for a point of pop. Sure. They are tied. Because <laughs> they're the trying. Trash. Well, I could do well, too, if I tried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your whole scheme we'll smacks some of effort. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's see. Uh, question three. Headlines were made recently after a well-to-do couple in India bought their son a brand-new BMW for his birthday, but upset that he didn't receive a Jaguar. The kid promptly rolled it down the hill into the oh, river and gave river. it a good push, sinking it. What a little bitch. Yeah, I knew I should have gone with that after I made my guess, but whatever. Always, always go forever. Was there a crime uh, okay. here? Was there, uh, is this a crime? It's got to be yeah, some sort yeah, of crime, right? Just, Environmental. I maybe. I, it or, wasn't, like, I tell me he I got slapped with something other than I mean, no car. Humility, hopefully. Well, who knows? <laughs> yeah, hated by everybody. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I think that that would fall under, I mean, at least in, was this, in, this I'm, I'm assuming this is in India, yeah? Yes. I don't know if they no, have the yeah. same laws no. that we do here regarding that sort of thing, but that would, if nothing yeah. else, it would fall under like illegal dumping or something. You know? Yeah, you yeah. Can't just like roll that. a fucking vehicle into a river. No, yeah. not as a rule for, for funsies. Oh man, no, not for funsies. Okay, question four. Let's see if uh, anyone pulls ahead here. While making one of the Star Wars movies, George Lucas technically created a word that didn't really exist. It's still used all around the world for a variety of reasons. This day, the word we were talking about was indeed droid. I thought oh, that might be a softball for you guys, uh, but I thought it well, was so Well, I got it, so it must have yeah. been. <laughs> we can call correct. them Ron Balls from now on. I won't Ron be Ball. I thought that might be a Ron Ball. <laughs> but, uh, Here's you, a Ronnie even, grounder. <laughs> even the company that makes the droid cell phones has to pay Lucas um, a fee for that oh that's yeah. interesting copyrighted huh. it. yeah and then interesting copyrighted yeah. word droid yeah so we have a tie gentlemen uh ronster got one point sorry buddy uh, wow. john mark and lyle both got two a pop so what i need you gentlemen to do is open up oh, eight I, I think i think john mark won it again i, I didn't guess that oh yeah he didn't get droid oh, oh you're right i yeah. apologize yeah. it's all good john oh. mark oh. hey, gentlemen, yeah. no, no type good necessary. lord all right Right. Well, this is fun. Call it the John Mark game. Here. Yeah, three in a row, buddy. He's a hundred percent for uh, so how bizarre. Hundred percent, though. How bizarre? Uh, okay, just just out of uh, curiosity here, how much uh, how much do you think the budget was for the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope? How much did they spend making it? Uh, five million. Um, I'm gonna guess one point seven million. Okay. Yikes! I'm thinking more like. 10 million? <laughs> yeah, well, Lyle's closest uh, was 11 mil. 11, yeah. That's a chunk of dough think, for 1977. I was thinking how, much 15, think it, how, yeah. how much do you think it grossed domestic at the theater? Altogether? And think, yeah, and I think this is in old-timey dollars, but I... <laughs> <doesn't say. laughs> Old timey. <laughs> 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 well, remember when dollars would grain? Those were crazy days, Shay. I'd 150 say, million. Yeah, I'd say 100 and I'd say 100 million. Yeah. Wow. 100 million, something like that. I don't know. Uh, 307. No, oh, wow. 307 no. bucks? Wow. Yeah, that was an expensive bucks. movie, son. If you're only grossing yeah. that much, that's pretty yeah. good. Way to budget, the budget. biggest mistake of George <laughs> Lucas's life. <laughs> well, it's funny because okay, in imagine. my mind's eye, like I remember the old version before all the cleaned up versions, as I know uh, you guys probably do as well. And it's like some of it seemed pretty low budgety. Yeah. Sure. I found that bootleg. I, I, got, I downloaded it onto my hard drive. It was. Oh, the I love like it. The, yeah, I watched that with all the fuck ups in it. It, it looks like, so cool, though. It is like it's all faded and it just looks like the <laughs> 70s. La, uh, John Mark, congratulations for uh, three in a row, buddy. Let's see if we can. Yeah, Thanks, industry. man. It's impressive. Yeah, I love I had to find a way to give you a handicap. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Mm. Wish I could just blow a giant. 
smoke like, bomb into your face and like answer this. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I think I, I think it's down to us to up our game. Uh, yeah, I think that's really on you guys. Yeah. They don't do that for uh, what's his name, Ken. <laughs> my what's favorite, his kisser from my Jeopardy. favorite thing is I think every episode so far, Lyle has answered a question with, "Well, I'm certain it's this answer because it couldn't be this." And it, it's one of the ones <laughs> I pulled out of my ass, <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah's been listening to the old podcast, of course, and uh, she just got to one of the episodes where I, for the second time, guessed that there is something perfectly square in nature. But I stuck, I stood by my uh, theory of guessing yes to all of them, or just choosing that, because at some yeah. point you were going to find something in nature that was square, and you actually did. But if I remember right, I didn't go with it. <laughs> I was it's not right or meant. Die and you just died. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not meant for this game. Although I'd go through runs. I used to kick ass on it to some to some degree. Yeah, I don't know. I started playing with, like, I, I could have guessed that it wasn't going to be jizz on the side of his car. <laughs> but well, I, I wanted it to. to be, I want those answers to be right. I want to be right guessing those answers more than I care about winning the game. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I play it different. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, thanks for throwing to me at least one Ronnie Grounder, as uh, we'll call it from here on out, I suppose. But, uh, well, I actually have three small stories I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, they're more general news that you might have seen. I, I'm curious to get your thoughts. Uh, first off, more of a Hollywood vibe here, Matrix 4. We're going to get a Matrix 4 movie. I saw that. How do you guys feel about that? I'm all for it. Yeah, I think that's John Mark's answer for most things, and I'm leaning more and more toward that these days. Like, there used to be a time when I was like, um, you know, leave it alone. Like, why fuck with it? It, it? But here's the thing. Like, nothing's perfect. Like, we 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 forget that. <laughs> we want to remember things being perfect. I don't know. The the Matrix trilogy is fraught with issues i think most people think like that with peril that first that first ep, uh the first installment should i say i think we all agree was like the best and then it went a little wacky in the second uh, one and then the third one was like crazy town but i feel like we all got some resolve but i don't know the, it depends on the franchise i suppose but i'm fine with uh, another the, major the reason the reason that i'm i'm for this is because i think that the wachowskis have something to say even though it's i guess it's only lana is going to be involved or yeah. mm-hmm. um but they still have something to say i don't know if you guys watch sense eight or not no what's um, that? it's a show that they did on netflix i highly recommend that you watch it mm. um and it has a sort of like you can tell that they did it right um it has sort of like a matrix c um i don't know if, uh, uh what's that cloud atlas kind of feel to it right yeah uh it, it's about all these uh, different people around the world that's that um realize that they have like this psychic connection kind of and they're essentially being hunted by this organization that wants to uh, subvert and use their powers for evil, obviously, right? So, mm. um, it's really good. Sense Eight's on Netflix, um, and if if they can do a new uh, Matrix, here's the thing: it's not a reboot, right? It's a sequel, no, it's a, and the same yeah. people are involved. Yeah. So Keanu's mm. in. Yeah. Um, Carrie Ann Moss is in, so mm. Keanu's fucking fire these days. So he's on I'm fire. All for he's, it. he's 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 golden with anything yeah. he touches right now, but. Here's my point. Why? Like, why do we... I, I Okay, I loved the first Matrix film. Like, I loved it an unhealthy amount. And when I say that, I mean I went and saw that movie in the theater more times than I I'm, am comfortable admitting. It's like, the crowning I was a, jewel of the franchise, no question. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, but no, not, not only that, only... it was... It was revolutionary as a science fiction film. Absolutely, like it, yeah. it was groundbreaking and much like, spoofed. <laughs> it changed. It changed things in in Hollywood. I believe. You remember in but, Kung Pao when they did the uh, cow shooting utter milk? <laughs> <laughs> they did that yeah. Matrix thing where they had to dodge mm-hmm. it in slow mo. <laughs> yeah. But two and three were just yeah. trash. They were, fil- if I'm not mistaken, they were filmed at the same time, so yeah, they kind of had that right. same same vibe. Ah, I just hated them both. Like I was so disappointed because I loved one so much. Yeah. I don't know. I just it's been so long well, since no, I've seen them, but I remember for liking redemption from you, Chris. I hope you're right, John Mark. I really, truly do. I'm just, I'm. I every day that 
traverses, I, I grow more and more old and grumpy like you guys. <laughs> well, to John Mark's skeptical. point, though, like if this had been – now, see, where I think we had reason to argue – and we were proven right, those that argued. In the, in the case of Indiana Jones, we had what I think most people thought was a perfect trilogy. Yeah, Maybe most great. people thought that about the Star Wars, the, the original three. But Indiana Jones is across the board. I think that we all th- thought you just should have stopped there. Because it was the same thing. It wasn't a reboot. It was a sequel 20-some mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. later. And none of us cared. (laughs) And we're like, well, this was stupid. But I don't think most of us feel that way about the Matrix trilogy. I think we all feel that the first one was really strong. I think, if I remember right, I feel like the second one is genuinely considered to be the weakest. And then the third one sort of finds its way a little bit back to round it all off. I honestly don't even remember the third one or what even fucking happened, to tell you the truth. Mm, Yeah. I don't either, but I think that nobody, I don't, I don't, what I'm trying to say is I don't think that we are as in love with this trilogy as a whole as we were with, say, Star Wars or Indiana Jones um, or anything else that was, we thought was set in stone 30 years ago. Uh, Now, of course, we get reboots and sequels all the time now, but it's just a cash cow thing, but... Keanu Reeves is in, <laughs> enter, entering an interesting phase in his life because he's also working on a new Bill and Ted film, and I feel mm. like there's something else. Isn't there a oh, was another like big '80s movie of his that I think is being rebooted or uh, a late sequel? Anyway, but so yeah, I don't know. Who cares? I think that ultimately we survived the prequels right if we can survive the george I, lucas prequels i feel like we can survive just about any uh i also feel like uh wachowskis have something more to say than spielberg did when he did yeah that's the, a good the, point the last too. <laughs> indiana jones movie you know like yeah, those guns in, were spent. increasing increasingly like spielberg and, and lucas were just kind of hacky you know like and I mean, uh, and Harrison Ford was pretty old. Like Keanu's still like kind of in his prime. Um, and I think the Wachowskis really have something to say. You mm, know, yeah. uh, I think you, if you watch Sense8, you will kind of pick up more on what the vibe of what they're doing is. Like Sense8 to me was really kind of you could tell it was a personal journey for them um, during their like their transition and stuff because it deals with a lot of those subjects and characters in a way that I've never seen in a TV show before. Yeah. Well, going back to uh, the idea of these later sequels, I think I is, have, has there been one that you guys can think of that we're like, Oh my God, I'm so glad they brought that back because they did this with the lost boys. They did a, a sequel with the lost boys way, way did after they? the fact. What? Yeah. It was kind of like a, I think it was I don't more. Remember that? What was it? Was it just yeah. the Frog Boys or? What? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like I really liked the Tron sequel. Uh, I thought that was so good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there's one. Uh, uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. But here's I the thing. Seen it. Here's the other thing about Blade Runner 2049. Fucking amazing. Oh, I, I still have not seen that. I will say, oh I, Jesus Christ, I liked Prometheus, um, yeah. but the Alien World is. <laughs> it's so disconnected in in some regard. You know, it's almost like Twilight Zone where it's it's a franchise and it's a name and occasionally, you know, you get the same names involved with it, but ultimately you can kind of go anywhere with it if there's a tie into it. I I had fun with Prometheus, but um going back to the prequels, I don't I don't think that we would have any of the new Star Wars films that a lot of us are pretty jazzed about if you didn't get through the the prequels right like that was the that sort of is what the i see so from 77 to what was it like 99 i think was star wars to reboot original star wars in the theaters to reboot in the theaters was like 77 to 99 then the those went through uh, like early 2000s and then we had about another 10 year break before the the J.J. J. Abrams version of Star Wars, Something right? Something like that, yeah. So it was, it was funny to think about is that it's kind of on a cycle, but you had to get through <laughs> Jar Jar Binks to get to The Force Awakens, which, 
um, you know. Well, they've been talking about it for a long time. It's it's just regurbished garbage that they've been doing. Regurbished, yeah. I like that term. Well, <laughs> look at look at like uh, the one of the best movies I, I fell in love with when, when I was a kid was Ghostbusters. Seen it in the movie theater like fucking thirty times, dude. And I've seen a lot of the the. There, it's still not like the first one. The first one was epic. Uh, right now, Top Gun. They're they're making a reboot of Top yeah. Gun. Yeah, but that's well, going to have reboot. it's a sequel. That's a sequel, a sequel too. That's going to have Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer in it. Yeah. Well, and then yeah. there's new Rambo, and it's like, why don't you just call it Grandpa? <laughs> Do you hear what the it's new like, Rambo's called? Ramp- though? You know, you know <laughs> Last Blood. I just saw Last the trailer Blood. today. <laughs> I got to be honest, that trailer looks fucking dope. <laughs> I'll watch it. Does, I'll watch it, it eventually. And, you know, but like. Jesus, I don't dude, know, man. I thought it looked pretty Lizard. fucking racist. Did it really? Well, maybe yeah. that says something about what? how we all are alive. I, to- I totally missed it, and I got to go back and watch it now. No, we're all there white. may be it's different cuts, to too, though, so you never know. Like, you never there know what be. cut you're going to see in the trailer. Listen, Ching Chang. <laughs> I want to know if they're going to bring back... I can't remember the the name of the actor that played Goose. Obviously, they can't bring back Goose. Spoiler oh, alert. There's Anthony uh, Anthony Edwards. Uh, yep. Are they going to bring back him as his twin brother <laughs> Moose? Because <laughs> oh, we loved duck. him. His He's, little brother Duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Guy. He's got two two little brothers. You know what I mean? <laughs> Both named Duck. But seriously, you guys need to watch that new Blade Runner. Okay, can't I'll, I'll put that like yeah. I, I can't, I can't either. believe it either. I'm going to put it in my queue. It's it's pretty good, huh? Oh man, I, I I saw it in the theater with the RPX and the crazy sound, and oh, it's just mm. enthralling. Yeah, oh, I'm into it. Well, let's get on out of here. Uh, join us at howbizarre dot or howbizarrepodcast dot com. Uh, I do believe that you can leave comments. This is really just our Libsyn podcast feed page, but you can play all the shows online. It works with the uh, iPhone. I know. I don't know if it works with android or anything else you can just play it right there stream it of course uh you can comment and share the page and you can send us messages if you have show ideas suggestions if you have a weird kooky story and you want to be on the show if it's a half hour tale or five minutes or if you want to get on here and play news quiz with us why not just get on shoot the shit with us play some quiz we've done that before it's always a good time and uh, a a lot of times they do win right like the guests (laughs) won a lot Especially if John Mark's not there for some reason. Yeah, for John some Mark reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, tune in next week, gang. We are going to be talking about nine eleven. I'm looking forward to this. It's it's not going to be a fun show. It's going to be heavy. Uh, got a lot mm-hmm. of research ahead of me, but uh, I, I feel ready. Yeah, I think we're prepared. So uh, yeah. look forward to that, and uh, have yourself a grand old week. Good night, guys. Night, guys. Yeah. Bye. Good night. This handpicked by ethnic people in uh, free places. Whatever white people say, huh? <laughs> They're trying free to look. Free places. <laughs>